Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, this is Mayank. Uh, I'm working as a, a cybersecurity consultant and identity, identity and access management consultant for one of the telcos in Doha, Qatar. Uh, my, some of my primary responsibilities are to take care of the, uh, the big and uh, medium-sized projects of, under the security domain. Uh, as a volunteer, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, the prospects of having uh, I am a security architect as a career and what all challenges do we get and what are the preparations that one needs to go undergo for becoming a IAM architect. There are a few uh, useful slides that I have made, maybe that they will be very useful for you to understand the topic. If you have any question in between, you can definitely ask me. I would apologize that I have a very neutral accent, so I'm not sure of the uh, audiences. Just, just in case I'm not audible or not understandable, please feel free to stop me. You find my you're doing good. <laughs> okay, so should should I go ahead? Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, when we talk about the IAM uh, identity and access management, that has become a very imperative domain of security, uh, considering some of the challenges that we have in market uh, right now. Uh, these are the six challenges that I see, and I have listed down here. Uh, the first challenge that I would uh, like to mention here is that IAM is not just a security technology domain. It also needs you to interface between multiple business people and the uh, uh, organizational leadership to understand the identity of various people, uh, which can range from enter enterprise people to the customers and the consumers. So uh, the interfacing definitely requires a lot of soft skills, which is somehow uh, needs to be uh, uh, bridged as we develop our skills. The second one is the complexity of the environment that is coming in. IAM can range from uh, identity and access management of a Microsoft server to an IoT device. And the complexity will definitely uh, range uh, maybe larger than that. And uh, when we talk about the complexity, a, a single individual having an expertise in different dom domains would be very difficult. So uh, becoming a security architect in IAM domain needs to have an understanding, at least the basic understanding of all these environments when we are uh, uh, doing the implementations. The third uh, is the uh, interpersonal skills, uh, which includes the deep analysis of uh, the communication and collaboration, which is required with, between, between different business units. The fourth challenge that I see is the agile adoption. Earlier, we used to get the ticketing mechanism. When we get the ticket, we have to implement uh, the requirements and then uh, uh, and then submit uh, the tickets. But now that uh, the requirements are very agile and we have to uh, fulfill the requirements uh, on the go. The, the, four, the, the fifth challenge that I see is the uh, security landscape. It is not just about the simple servers that we are implementing. We have new technology is coming in, which is ranging from 5G to IoT and robotics. And the threat and landscape is also widening. And we have to patch up with that as well. Uh, just to go to, uh, do we have any questions in this uh, slide? No, and I will, I will let you know when you have questions. All right, fantastic. Okay, so coming to the next slide, this is just a, I have taken a reference from Gartner. Uh, about the uh, latest review of uh, uh, some of the, uh, this was a voting, which uh, I just got it from the Gartner website, wherein people uh, submitted their responses on the top technologies, which is in demand for IAM. So as you can see that the top technology, 46% uh, of the people ranked, ranked number one, two, or three as being the architecture design, which is the main uh, main skill that is required for becoming an IAM architect. The second one being uh, the risk management and the identity proofing. So as you can see from this, uh, uh, this graph, architecture design is one of the most important uh, uh, skill sets that you would need. Apart from that, the, some, of, some of the other skill sets that one may need is uh, this, the SIM, uh, uh, which is the log monitoring and uh, uh, log analysis experience. Then is the user behavior analytics experience and, and some more. But as you can see from the graph, the architecture design is 
the most prominent one. And one of the other uh, uh, papers of Gartner also says that usually organizations end up spending 22 to 40 percent more cost because of having a wrong architecture of an IM solution. So uh, this is really very important. Uh, coming to the next slide. So in this slide, uh, I have tried to show various technologies, which uh, uh, I, I have sectioned different technologies as per their positive impact on IM, IM and the learning curve that is required to learn those technology and the impedance to apply those technologies. So as you can see in this first section, which is technical architecture, there are multiple technologies, as you can see, which is ranging from blockchain to mo mobile uh, web architecture to the cl cloud, cloud native architecture, analytics, machine learning, uh, modern IAM protocols, containers and directories. As you can see that uh, uh, blockchain is a little heavy uh, technology, which will be a completely a disruptive technology, will, will, which will take a complete paradigm shift in the IAM perspective, because from the centralized mechanism, you are going to be going to the uh, decentralized mechanism of identity management. But that will be uh, uh, something good uh, and new to learn for. Now, the second one uh, that I would like to talk about is the process implementation and the practices. Uh, as the time changes, the IAM implementation is also changing. So as I earlier mentioned, that the agile practices are coming into picture rather than having static uh, requirements now we are going agile the problems comes and they will need to be resolved then and there so devops is coming the ci cd pipelines are coming uh, coming in and the continuous delivery of the uh, requirements are coming and during the entire life cycle and the process you have to make sure the identity is not mismanaged so the authentication authorization and accountability stays as is with a given a particular identity. And this is where uh, the important comes in because the IAM architect needs to be, un to have a, it needs to be very well versed with these technologies and the processes as well. Maya, now, so before you move any further, I just want to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, when, when we talk about uh, IAM, right? Uh, one, yeah. of the, one of the uh, concerns is uh, how do you manage digital workers? These are your chatbots of the world. Those are your automation and stuff. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, of course. So what happens is like, for example, as I earlier mentioned that earlier, it used to be only uh, enterprise level identity management that uh, an employee is coming in, he is assigned an identity and uh, authentication is, uh, uh, is configured for him and the authorization as per his role is given to him. But now the, the, the role is widening. Now, uh, every individual, uh, like for example, if I am talking to an, a chatbot, and if I uh, uh, if I drop a malware, then it can uh, it can probably reach to the core uh, of the environment, and it can maliciously infect the environment as well. So uh, for that analysis, it, you need to have a, an ad identity ID assigned to each and every communication that is happening to my core environment, and that's where uh, when we have the chatbots or anything. Uh, we need to have the identity uh, and access management lifecycle which needs to be placed in. Uh, I will give you an example. For example, I, if I implemented a, a, a chatbot and I have to probably recharge my cell phone. So I send a message through chatbot to my uh, uh, probably uh, uh, my IN server and then it gets, it, get, it gets my mobile phone recharged. Now, during this entire process, probably we, instead of sending a uh, predefined uh, um, bot messages, we, I can also send some scripts which can infect my core environment. So for that, uh, I need to have the identity uh, assigned to me so that we can, uh, uh, it can do, it can do the verification of uh, the ident uh, of my identity if I'm the real customer or not, and then uh, probably do the, uh, 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 probably run the scripts. So identity and access management is not just for the environments anymore, it is for the consumers and the customers as well. Uh, there are some, uh, so have I been able to answer your questions? Yes, yes, definitely, thank you. Okay, so uh, apart from that, there are some more technologies that I have uh, listed here. The second one is the access management. Uh, uh, one more is the API gateways. As you can see that the, uh, the communication is not anymore through the TCP 22 or 445. 
most of the uh, most of the servers when they, they could go to the cloud they are uh, communicating through soap or uh, rest apis so the api gateways are very important to secure uh, those communications just to make sure that any kind of uh, communication happening through the apis uh, is properly authenticated and, and uh, the authorization does happen apart from that the pam is very important uh, piece of iam uh, uh, this is the privilege and access management. What happens is whenever somebody, uh, especially the administrators, trying to access anything, we have to make sure that the authentication, authorization, and accountability is taken care. And most of the times, the breaches that happen is through the leakage of the passwords. Most of the times, administrators don't change their passwords or the passwords are very weak or uh, uh, they don't match the organizational policies of uh, managing the passwords. Apart from that, any, any uh, malicious activity that happens, it goes unaccounted. We don't know who has done what. Most of the times are shared, uh, the credentials are shared. So the activities are not accounted for. So for that, the PAM, uh, um, uh, PAM implementation becomes imperative. And IAM architects, uh, for IAM architects, it is a kind of a must have skill uh, to go forward in their career paths. So uh, some of the main vendors for PAM is uh, PAM are CyberArk or Beyond Trust. There are some of the prominent vendors we have in market. So what they do is that they make sure that the password management is completely taken care of without any handholding from the administrators. And uh, the sessions are being recorded and they, com they completely take care of the compliance requirements the session recordings are uh, sent to the storage storage uh, for six months and uh, whenever the auditor needs the, the the recordings can also be presented so it is one of the most prominent skill sets that one needs apart from that for uh, the my unk my unk yeah. um, so just now like when you talk about uh, uh, identity and privilege access management and the input that you provide uh, yeah. Would you provide input on how to segment a network because uh, due to ransomware that has become one of the most important stuff that you know people need to be aware of. So is your as an IAM architect, yeah. do you provide your input on segmentation also? Yeah, of course. So I, as I said earlier, uh, in fact, I'm going to be discussing this uh, later in the, uh, the one of the slides as well. So the IAM architect is the one who is going to be interfacing with, uh, with the enterprise architect architect solution architect uh or probably i'll just go to that slide yeah this is the slide so as you can see that any given application or any technology implementation there are uh, we have section different architects uh, according to their interfacing with the businesses and their technology uh, expertise so as you can see the expertise of an enterprise architect and the security architect uh, is being interfaced with uh, solution architect and domain architect uh, by the IAM architect. So he somewhere sits in between. So for example, if we are going to be implementing one of the new technologies, I will say, for example, a 5G implementation. So uh, there would be multiple architects, probably there would be some open stack architect would be there and uh, there would be some security firewall architect, blah, blah. So the IAM architect would be ensuring that the identities of all these components are taken care right from the start of the life cycle so that uh, you know this segmentation of the networks uh, or the firewalls where, who is implementing the firewall everybody has an identity attached to it so so that any action that happens uh, no, does not go unaccounted for i hope i answered your question yes yes you did definitely okay okay so coming back to this uh, slide again Apart from that, from the business architecture perspective, uh, one needs to have a mature IAM architect also needs to have IAM program life cycle, which I'm going to be mentioning later in one of the slides. It should be aware of the entire life cycle so that uh, attaching the identities and managing those identity right from the life, right from the start of the, uh, the life cycle uh, is a part of his job and you must be aware of those. Apart from that, as, it, as this, I'm sorry, you're saying something? Yeah, yeah. I was just, uh, Harpinder has asked a question yeah. and he wants okay. to know, the, you remember you said like the recordings, so the logs basically, yeah. uh, are there only like uh, some kind of uh, 
warning based or is it some kind of error based also okay so what happens is that uh, I, I will talk about one uh, product maybe you uh, the same features would be in different products as well so I, i'll talk about cyberarc for example so what happens is cyberarc uh, uh, there are some session management servers from where you uh, set up the whole solution to access every every single session through those session servers so every session that is initiated from those servers are recorded and irrespective of what you do it is being recorded and also maintaining the metadata that metadata is as per your policies now there is another component of the cyberarc implementation is uh, the threat analytics server so those metadata undergoes an anal analysis automatic analysis as per your policies and for example if you say that a database uh, server should not be accessed by this particular segment and if the metadata suggests that this database was accessed from this segment then it will create an alert and will send it to your sim or maybe your email or whatever but irrespective of alerts or not the alerts for the compliance perspective the entire recording the raw recording is being saved in a storage solution i hope this answers the question sure sure so thanks so much so basically depends on your risk tolerance and your policies for yes. your um, based on your business regulatory requirements government location etc right yes, exactly yes okay thanks okay so uh, one more uh, technology that i was uh, i was mentioning was the casb so casb is uh, is a very uh, uh, very much in need right now because most of the customers want to go to the cloud and when they go out to the cloud there is a security access broker is required because from anywhere in the world you are accessing saas based services and uh, you may upload the data you may uh, your identity needs to be monitored by the organization they definitely would want to so these are the casb solutions which are which comes in, in in picture they have the dlp features they have the identity management features wherein they control your dlp and just in case if you try to uh, try to upload some data or probably send out uh, download some data then you are monitored and those logs are sent to your sim solutions uh, some of the prominent casb solutions are from mcafee sky high there I, mean, i can just name a few but uh, definitely there are many more in market right now and then is the ueba which is a component of casb but it also comes with pam sometimes uh, it depends on the vendor which is user analytics and behavior analysis so basically what they do is they undergo the entire whole uh, uh, whole identity management who is accessing what through a threat analytics platform and will uh, automatically raise the alerts if they think that this is a malicious uh, access being uh, uh, initiated then they create the alerts and probably they also range uh, they also uh, uh, try to uh, they, they also tag the number of uh, users as per their uh access behavior if somebody is trying to access uh, a lot of facebook then probably they will alert and so so that this is this guy is doing uh, maybe wastage of time during the office hours <laughs> yeah just try to create a behavior analysis uh, this is what i mean my ank i have a question about uh, so is is this iam architect role an entry level role or because you're yeah. talking about all these different products that are that a person would uh, have yes. to know so yeah so a very good question actually so uh, the i am architect role uh, yeah so i am architect would not be a entry level low role but one who has an ex uh, an extensive experience in one of the technologies can go into i i am architect role uh, role uh, after gaining some experience in various technologies because i have Uh, probably uh, named of a lot of technology so for example if somebody has been working in ci cd pipeline for some time he can be an art i am expert in container technologies for example or if somebody if is from the telco domain he can become an i am expert in uh, uh, maybe in iot or or uh, some other telco domain but if somebody wants to be uh, an entry level wants to go to i am probably he can be a cyber arc administrator or a uh, casb administrator for example uh, and then he can lead his uh, role he can probably uh, gain some more experience and then go to i am architect role so by i've been able to answer your question perfect no 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 this makes sense because you were mentioning these so 
is it is it good to have like certifications in these products because uh, i yeah, know that sure. Sar- so cyber arc has certifications yes. cyber arc has uh, three certifications it starts from a trusty certification then is a uh, uh, a sentry certification and there is a third one which is called guardian certification the three certifications that you have to take to become a cyber arc uh, expert uh, likewise we have certifications for casb and uh, some other solutions as well i have listed down some of the certification in my one of the other slides probably i'm going to be covering them as well sure 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 uh, there is a question again what is the difference between cloud security and on prem from an iam architect perspective a uh, very good question actually uh, so for example uh, the legacy architectures which used to be a three tier architecture starting from the perimeter firewall and the application level firewall and going to the data center core firewall this used to be a regular architecture of uh, most of the legacy environments but now going to the cloud is that picture is completely changed everything is like a dmz and uh, people are accessing those software or the platforms from anywhere across the world uh, so uh, organizations first of all are responsible for safeguarding their data uh, not many cloud vendors would take a responsibility of data if you have not set up your cloud environments properly so uh, this has become absolutely important for the iam architects or the security architects to understand how to uh say how to safeguard their data how to control the data to be accessed because uh, eventually this is their intellectual property which is hosted into some other environment and if we do not man- manage the identities properly then uh, probably the cloud vendors would not be responsible for that so ha- having a knowledge of pam and casb technologies i would say are most important when you go to uh, the clouds uh, most of the pams have their cloud solutions as well for example cyberarc what they do is they give you some cloud connectors from where you can do the recordings of what you are accessing from your cloud hosted environments yeah it is definitely different from what we have in on prem security because there you used to have a legacy environments uh, probably uh, you have the firewalls which is uh, some of the firewalls and uh, other security solutions like for example dlp uh but in cloud environments you have uh hosted uh, services for you, even for your desktops so your uh thought process your strategy for securing your environments is completely changed when it comes to cloud security sure 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 but and it's not the same but uh the strategy has to be different correct and one thing that i tell people like because i'm uh, in risk is that uh, the right person the right device and the right location so exactly. we didn't have yeah. to we didn't have to think about these things uh, when yeah. on prem we were talking about access to on prem people were working out of certain office or something and yeah. uh, can you can you like tell me a little bit about how zero trust has impacted this whole uh, iam architecture yeah, of course yeah it has actually so uh, earlier what used to happen is the access control your mechanism used to be in different two different ways uh, one is that uh, that you, you you used to allow everything and then you used to start restricting the access of the applications as per what you analyze and think that it is not required but uh, as uh, you know uh, the time goes by we have realized that the zero trust policy is uh, the most important strategies when we go for the clouds for for uh, for example and uh, i would also like to mention that uh, uh, the geo tagging when we uh, implement something from the cloud the geo location is very important when we are hosting a data uh, your data uh, uh, for example if you are hosting your erp solution in uh, maybe on the amazon cloud and uh, you want to restrict that data not to be accessed from outside the us then uh, this is what is called the geo restrictions Uh, uh now coming back to the uh, zero trust policy uh, the zero trust policy is that when you start opening the access you don't trust anyone and now and and then you start opening the access as per the requirement and this is the right policy uh, actually and uh, yeah so do we have any specific questions on this further yeah minku wants to know if you need to know programming uh, for this role and if you have to then what what languages okay so uh, i would <laughs> yeah it's 
a question that uh, definitely comes in everybody's mind, but uh, to give a simple uh, answer, I would say that Python is the best programming language, even if you need or not, you should know Python because uh, going forward, everything is getting automated and nobody wants to uh, go to the console every time. It is a world of automation and uh, Python is the best language that you can learn. Uh, although the UIs are so dynamic nowadays that even if you are implementing us, uh, uh, although we are not covering this technology called SOAR technology, so security automation and orchest orchestration tools, uh, it is basically working on Python. You can do everything automated through Python or Ruby, uh, but it is not important to have a knowledge of programming, but it is definitely good to have. So I differentiate between programming and scripting. So I, my answer was yes, because Python, like mostly you use it for scripting and automation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was uh, what I was thinking too. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. please, you're with your next okay. slide. So I think, uh, uh, do we have any further questions on this slide? Maybe? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. Now this is the uh, I am architect role and responsibilities. So basically this, uh, when there is an arch I, I am architect, uh, he has, uh, I have differentiated these responsibilities in three different ways. One is the enhancing the security and risk management. Second responsibility is the architect, architecting the digital business. And third is the enabling of the digital business. The whole, so when you are an architect, you are responsible from zero to 10. And the whole life cycle, uh, your role will be interfacing with multiple people at different levels, which is ranging from uh, maybe the end users to the uh, technical people and to the business leaders as well. So uh, from enhancing the security and risk management, you need to establish trust, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, privacy, uh, the basic uh, fundamentals of security. And uh, then for architecting, architecting the, uh, the digital business, I'm sorry, I just, okay. This required uh, what we have already discussed, it is identity and uh, uh, governance and administration, which is basically assigning an identity to uh, anybody who wants to access your application and doing the complete governance of that and, and until the, the association uh, uh, is uh, suspended. Then is the PAM, uh, which I've already discussed in detail, which is a privileged access management. Then is the access uh, management and authentication and the customer identity and management for ex uh, that I have already given an example of chatbots. There can be multiple examples, but these are a few examples that we have discussed already. And then enabling the digital business wherein you are going to be interfacing with the business leader for customer satisfaction, which is apparent uh, requirement of any kind of business engagement. And then is the employee, employee engagement, shifting investments and agility and robustness. So basically, for, uh, being an IAM architect, you need to be interfacing with multiple people of different efficiencies. Sure, there are a, a few questions, uh, Mayank, if you are at a good stopping point in your presentation. Uh, yeah, of course. So oh. should I be going to the another slide and take the questions or I'm happy to take the questions right now? Yeah, if you, if you yes. Uh, so there is a question about uh, uh, somebody like Abdul is uh, working as a VMware uh, engineer and uh, on the AWS platform and should he choose like DevOps or security, which I think it's a personal choice, but what would your advice be? Okay, so uh, if he is a, a VMware, uh, uh, maybe he's, uh, he's doing the implementations of uh, VMware solution on our AWS. Uh, so yeah, he rightly said that he has uh, DevOps is mostly for uh, automation or uh, what you call it, the uh, this, uh, continuous delivery of application requirements and security is and can be a part of that. Security is not different from uh, DevOps, but when you're taking a role dedicated for security, then that will be a different uh, career path altogether. What we can, what I would suggest is that he can opt for uh, DevOps, take, for, take some experience and when you uh, when you take some experience in DevOps technologies, you can anytime switch to security. Okay, this is great advice. Thank you so much. Uh, Rachna wants to know, uh, how do you interact with compliance and are you like uh, responsible or do you architect like a compliance solution to show that, you know, 
your IM management is compliant with whatever uh, regulations are in place? Uh, I'm not an, uh, if you talk about my role, I'm not an auditor, but yeah, I interface with various auditors to fulfill their requirements in my organization. Uh, and I have consulted many, many, many customers for their audit uh, in terms of IAM capabilities. Okay, all right. So, so, so basically your uh, interaction with compliance or do you like architect a compliance solution? I, I, I don't know because like the question is, people are typing it in so it's not coming through yeah. quite uh, well but she will let us know uh, sure. uh, there is another question from um, i think uh, so how does iam role interface with cyber risk management okay it's a very good question uh, uh, but usually uh, uh, grc is a different role from iam so uh, grc do all the governance risk and compliance management uh, and for which I am is also a part of that, but I am architect role will be uh, ensuring the technology implementation and management of the whole life cycle of uh, I am. This is like uh, somebody is accountable in the uh, uh, RASI matrix. Somebody is responsible for it, and somebody is accountable for it, and somebody is consulted for it. Yeah, but uh, both of them uh, uh, have different roles to address. But yeah. When GRC is doing the governance, I am will also be a part of that. Sure, but the sure. GRC, uh, GRC uh, consultants would not be responsible for ensuring I am implementations and uh, all other operations as well. So, so let me let me take that. So basically, um, the IA uh, the IAM architect is part of maybe operations because they were like, when, when a new project and something new is coming up, they will yeah. advise and they will like probably architect something, right? And uh, the risk is, the risk management professional will decide if the given solution, given the uh, classification of the data, which is passed is adequate. Yes, yes. So, so it will be like, uh, the auditor will suggest that probably we don't have the efficient controls, then GRC will, do the risk assessment and we'll see that do, do we have this uh, uh, our appetite uh, is there to uh, uh, to address this risk or not and accordingly we will probably suggest an IAM solution and then the IAM architect would pitch in and will probably suggest the controls that we can that can be implemented correct so basically the risk the the risk analyst risk manager will decide on what is the data classification right Right, and right. Uh, based on that, the solutions can be created because not all data is the same and not all data requires the same kind of protection that you uh, can afford, right? Yes, yes, right. Okay, coming back to, uh, okay. God, it's such a long question. Okay, ha Harpinda, uh, what's up with you? Uh, okay, another question uh, for this slide, PAM, IAM, access management and customer identity and access management should all be implemented or can something be left out from functionality perspective? The, and he says the more security there is, the load on the application is greater. Uh, this question is, uh, yeah, I would rather answer that this depends on your organizational risk appetite. If, uh, uh, so you have to do a complete risk analysis and understand what do you want to control because apparently everything is about uh, uh, return of investment because you have to put in a lot of money to implement those controls. But yeah, for banking kind of solutions, PAM is uh, a requirement of PCI DSS and uh, yeah, some other uh, requirements also need that. Sure, there's another question, uh, which is like, uh, does an IAM architect work with Microsoft's Active Directory? Uh, yeah, they would because this, as I said, this is a complete, uh, uh, IAM architect would be taking care of the entire life cycle. For Microsoft, there is a there is a solution called FIM, uh, uh, FIM solution, which is Federated Identity Management Solution. What they do is whenever uh, an employee, for example, uh, comes in or joins your organization, uh, his identity is requested from that platform. And then this is where the whole story of identity creation is started. And until his uh, 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 services end with the organization, FIM takes care of his authentication, authorization, and accountability. Apart from that, it interfaces with multiple other solutions like PAM. 
So yeah, Microsoft also has multiple solutions. Now Azure ID, uh, ID is one more solution which takes care of your identities uh, on the cloud. So yeah, Microsoft has definitely definitely has multiple technologies for that. Sure, sure. Please go ahead with your slide now. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, so I'm coming back to the slide and I think I have already uh, discussed this slide. Uh, it's just that to, to place uh, I am architect in your organization uh, in terms of various architects they, that, that work in different departments. Yeah, so this is the, the I am architect skill sets supporting the I am program. So this is the complete I am program uh, for which we need to have them vision and architecture, but this is not important from the career perspective. I just wanted to bring in this slide to understand the complete life cycle of I am implementation, so I don't think I should discuss it. If people are more interested about career, then I would skip this slide. No, they are more interested. Like, continue with this. Uh, okay, sure. So, uh, what will happen is that whenever you are undergoing uh, an I am program, so first of all, you need to have a vision, of course, because you know you need to know what you want to achieve with this uh, with this uh, initiative. So understand what is the technology because and the trend because there there may be an example that you are an organization who wants to go to the cloud or you are considering to the go to the cloud going to the cloud you need to understand your uh, technologies you have in place and the trends so that you have the better investment uh, and you get the return as well then the envisioning the capabilities needed to uh, needed based on the business context and build the shared target state, uh, basically what you want to achieve apparently with the solution. And then uh, once you have the vision ready, then you create a roadmap. Then you uh, assess the uh, technical viability of the solutions. And then you create the complete project plan, phase by project plan that when you are going to do, do what, uh, and what will be your strategy to bring that, that, that technology in your environment. And once you have that ready, then you will create the architecture of that solution. Just giving an example of PAM solution, for example, if you have a PAM uh, solution, you will understand if the PAM needs to be accessed from outside the organization or from in the, within the organization, where should be the placement of various servers, which all server needs to be accessed, where is the storage needs to be kept. Everything will uh, come under the architecture phase. And then you will create the business use cases that how many, uh, who will be given what kind of access, who will have the recording access, how the auditors will come in and access the recordings and what will be the KPIs, for example, uh, how, for how, how long uh, the storages needs to be kept. So these are the artifacts of an IAM program once you undergo this thing. If somebody is interested, probably I can elaborate on that further as well. Sure, have, so Rachna, I, I think this answers your question. And yes. uh, there's another question which is, uh, does API security fall under IAM for you? Uh, yeah, it does actually, because uh, as I earlier said that when you are going out to the cloud, everything has to be tagged with a, uh, an identity. And all the servers, had, uh, had traditionally they used to be accessed via the various protocols like TCP 22 or 445. Now this is not the case anymore. You are, you are accessing your servers via APIs. Now, when you, are, uh, when you are doing that, then you need to have the identity management in place. You need to understand that which application is interacting with you to access a particular API. Like for example, uh, I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, I have a server which needs to be connecting to my IAM server or a TIBCO server to get the billing details of my mobile phone. So who is, who is getting that access needs to be packed with an identity so that the server should know who is getting the billing, billing details. So yeah, for I, this, just giving an example, but yeah, definitely API security should have I, I am in place. Sure, but probably you will have you use a I am gateway, right? You're not going to like sit there. Yes, I am gateway. So, uh, yeah, so I am gateway is a consolidated solution which takes care of everything. All those servers also have that feature to control, but that is one stop solution which can control your entire API traffic and uh, you can configure authentication and authorization for that. Sure, go ahead. Um, there's a question from Sanjeev and he said that will identity as a service um, like reduce the demand for IAM architect careers? And, uh, very good question, but uh, definitely not because uh, IAM, um, I, identity as a service is just a cloud service. Like for example, 
there is a, a cloud offering from Okta, if you've heard of that vendor. So they give you a software as a service for identity services. And uh, basically the solution is hosted on the cloud, but you are managing those identities. So I think uh, in, my pers in my opinion, it increases the responsibility of an IAM architect, not, not reduce it. Perfect, yes, because that's what I also felt that it's going yeah. to all these new products, everything, right? So yes. somebody has to like apply when, when, does a, when does an organization use them? So these are different tools that are getting added and uh, it's, it's going to like increase, not decrease because there is more complexity that is now being added with if a co company decides to, you know, uh, use right. these uh, new tools. So right. yeah, go ahead. Okay, so coming to the next slide. So I have listed down some of the skills that will be really, really good if you want to be an architect uh, for the next 10 years, maybe. Uh, I, I am architect. So these are the uh, valuable skills because technology landscape is changing. So the threat landscape is also changing. So uh, most of the IAM products now needs to be, what they do is that as soon as you create an, an identity, they automatically discover the identities. For example, uh, you have, you, you onboarded a desktop in your environment. They automatically learn the MAC addresses and the, uh, and the other details of that server and create an identity out of that automatically through machine learning. And then uh, these kind of configurable devices needs a very less human interface, but definitely an IAM architect needs to have those understandings so that he can configure these kind of technologies in his environment. So I have listed down some of the technologies which are really good to have. Uh, I've already spoken about uh, cloud architectures, API gateways, containers. Somebody talked about DevOps, right? So he wants to go to DevOps or security. So as you can see, that containers is a part of IAM needful technologies. Then there's a, a robotic uh, process automation tools and the mobile architecture, which are completely uh, cloud native architectures now. So these are the listed technologies that one should have, uh, if not very deep knowledge, but good to know technologies, definitely. Thanks uh, so much. Yeah, go ahead, please. Now is the next slide. Yeah, so I have just listed down some of the protocols because uh, this is a very important uh, thing. When we are, uh, for example, you have any, any application, a web server, for example, you need to be authenticating to that web server. So it is very imperative to choose the right protocol. How are you going to uh, implement or configure the uh, authentication? So there are various methods. Uh, for example, SAML2 is the most used uh, protocol for uh, the federated identity. And then is the open ID and op OAuth as well for the API uh, uh, for uh, doing the IPA um, AI management through APIs. And uh, so is the FIDO and uh, SEIM if you have the JSON or REST based design patterns. And uh, there is one more that I have left is the open ID. For example, if you want to authenticate through Google or other federated services, then open ID is also useful. So there are some of the uh, protocols that one must have a good understanding about the protocols. Sure, sure. Um, this is really good. And uh, can you just talk a little bit about where, what, what two does and what open ID does? Because people like normally they talk about it in one breath and they yeah. do not appreciate that one is like for authentication and the other one is for authorization. So <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. So open ID is basically the idea is that you are using the public services for your identity management, but at the same time, you are not, you are not sharing the identity de details with those, uh, with those uh, vendors. For example, if you want to authenticate to some of the, uh, 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 maybe you are uh, logging into some application server and it asks you for the authentication through Google. So what Google is that uh, Google will do is that Google will uh, through the open ID, they will uh, redirect you to the Google services, will authenticate you, and then will uh, will uh, will confirm that you have been authenticated by Google, and then you can enter the service. But the best part is that your identity details are not shared with that that server. So this is the best part of Open ID. Sure, thank you so much. There is a question from Harpinder, and he says that. Uh, 
Can you elaborate on the modern protocols to be enabled on API in the previous slide? Uh, the previous slide. You're talking about this? Uh, no, the one before that. I think so. Uh, you're talking about this? Oh, the previous slide, I think I'm already on this protocol side. I think he's. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That's what I thought too. Uh, okay. So basically, the, uh, the API management. Uh, so the basically APIs are of two kinds, which is proper, uh, prominently used. One is the one is the uh, SOAP based API, and one is the REST based API. So uh, it depends on your application architecture. How are you uh, going to get authenticated? But these are the two uh, protocols that are used for APIs. But both are both are through the HTTP and HTTPS method. Sure. Sure. Thanks. So. Uh, Okay, so this is your career path for the uh, becoming an API for the IM architect. So basically, I've already uh, discussed about this, uh, but I will just go through the web uh, for the um, slide again. Uh, first of all, when you want to or probably think of becoming an arch uh, IM architect, what you need to do is that you need to understand what skills you have. For example, somebody mentioned about being a VMware. Uh, engineer and he wants to go into IAM architect role in security. So he, he needs to understand what all skills he has and what is the gap. Probably he has the uh, uh, the required uh, uh, DevOps skills, but he does not understand uh, what is authentication and authorization. If he just covers those skills, then probably he's the, the he he has all the required skills for uh, becoming an, an IAM architect. And then once he uh, he identify uh, the skills required, then he needs to create an individual development plan. And then he would, I would rather suggest that he should jump into a volunteer. Oh, she also, right? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm sorry for being so <laughs> Yeah, definitely he or she uh, should be volunteering. Uh, probably he probably can ask in his organization if there is any I am uh, maybe uh, a very basic project which where he can understand uh, he or she can understand the basic skills required and then we'll get a uh, good mentoring maybe uh, so anyway he can they can probably uh, contact somebody through linkedin or maybe in their own organi organizations and then get a hands on training and the certification uh, i have already listed down the certifications that one one would need and uh, i think they are this can make them ready for becoming an AIA architect. This is this is really good stuff because, uh, can you go back to the previous yeah. slide? Yeah. yeah. This is really good because this path is probably you can, you know, like any anything that you're trying to do, right? Assess your yeah. skills and then then decide on what you want to do because yeah. it's, it's important there, right? Like, yes, right. Uh, if you do not like what you are trying to write, it, it could sound, Another thing, like go and talk with somebody like Mayank and see what a day in his life looks like and see if you if that's something what you wanted. Because so many times something looks really cool from the outside. And then when you when you like work towards it and you reach there and you say, oh, this is something which I did not really want to sign up for. And yeah. it, it just saves you the time, you know, and it quickly you can probably uh, shortlist your uh, choices. Right, right. And when you have uh, when you have the mentoring uh, or uh, hands-on training, then you will be able to uh, judge yourself that where do you stand in that particular role if you are ready to go into a deep dive into that particular role or not. Maybe yeah. Sure. So, and Mayank, is it okay for people to reach out to you on LinkedIn because um, and and like yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. And if they have any questions regarding I am, if I have not been able to explain that, if they want to discuss anything further, if they want any help into any different any specific technology that I have discussed here, if I have the expertise and uh, knowledge, I'll be more than happy to share with them. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Um, please go ahead. You're talking about the certifications, right? Uh, yeah. So before I go to the certification, this is something that is uh, very important. Uh, this is one picture to understand what, what one needs to become an IAM architect. Uh, so this is a T-shaped uh, T-shaped IAM architect skill set. So what you see in the uh, horizontal is uh, are the technologies where you need to deep dive. Uh, uh, sorry, the vertical ones you need to deep dive, and the horizontal ones you need to have a good to know knowledge. And if you 
this is what I have uh, figured out, but maybe there are uh, something that you can add. So uh, PAM, uh, identity governance and access management are the technologies that you need to have to understand the complete life cycle for a technology implementation of a, a, a identity and access management solution. But there are some certain technologies like blockchain. It is not in IAM uh, right now, but it is definitely a de decentralized uh, identity is something it is definitely going to come in the coming years, maybe two or three years. And then this will be a good technology to know, maybe to make you a future ready IAM architect. And then, then the AI APIs that we've already discussed, you know, don't need to be knowing the programming, how to do the JSON programming or the, uh, you know, but you need to have an understanding of how the APIs communicate with each other, how to, uh, you know, uh, control and the, uh, how to implement authentication and authorization for the APIs while they communicate with the application. Similarly, the DevOps and Agile uh, uh, processes that how do how do, are they different from uh, waterfall method maybe so that you can gel well with other uh, software developers uh, to make them aware of the identity and access management requirements and then you can collectively build a secure application because when you are an IAM architect you need to be communicating with different people for uh, ranging from uh, maybe a, a software developer or a business leader because you are apparently your uh, target is to build a a secure application uh, so you need to have an, a knowledge of them okay there is a question from uh, Srinath and he is asking if you need to have like a, an application development background to get into IAM uh, definitely it, it is the best uh, thing you can have actually because uh, the biggest skill set uh, uh, gap that uh, that arise in market is that most of the software developers are not aware of security and the security professionals are not aware of uh, software development. So if you can bridge that gap, probably you will be the best security architect. <laughs> Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, any, any other questions? Actually, this is, this is really good diagram, you know, because this shows people like, uh, what general like knowledge you need to have and then what in-depth stuff that you need to know. So, so this is the, the way you uh, described it and the way you have uh, put this diagram together is really helpful. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Uh, anybody else has a question? Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Mayank, I really appreciate you. You really did a bang up job on this slide uh, deck that you've prepared and thank you for paying it forward. And uh, I'll just uh, terminate our live stream now. Thank you. And thanks everybody for joining. If there is any other uh, particular uh, um, role that you are interested in learning more about, then uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I am Nilofa Tamboli and uh, let me know so I can like bring on some other expert to help us out. Thanks and bye. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are done.